everyone. I'm Yelena. So tonight is our session on building chatbots. Uh, here is the agenda. We're going to discuss what's a chatbot, a key chatbot terminology. Then we're going to apply the key chatbot terminology to build the Mr. BMI chatbot application. This is an example, and you're going to receive the JSON file code after this session. And we're gonna talk about some tips and tricks, best practices, a little bit about assignment for requirements. And of course, as always, your questions and answers, right? So this is important, okay? You need to make sure that the chatbot implementation is ready at least two to three days before the course end. Why? Because you need to run an experiment. You have to have people to test your chatbot, right? So that takes time, right? Then please make sure you do not deactivate your IBM Cloud account. It's very important, right? Do not enter the credit card number into your IBM Cloud account, right? Please do not submit any tickets to IBM. You need to submit the tickets to through Salesforce to TA, right? Please do not deactivate your account. I said it multiple times, all right? So then you have a quiz where number of attempts is unlimited, but you have to get 70% on it, right? You need to pass the quiz. You need to get 70%. Uh, the walkthrough that you got on the chat, but it's sequential. What does it mean is that I cannot go to page five until I'm done with ungraded exercise on page four, because ungraded exercise is going to lead you to something that's covered on page five. So you need to do all, right? Uh, then the chatbot that you do for assignment four, you cannot turn in Mr. BMI that I'm going to give you today. You cannot turn in Mr. Cold, right? It has to be on your area of interest and it has to be your original work. Well, some examples could be the restaurant reservation, doctor appointment scheduling, maybe something like IT troubleshooting, UMGC advising. Those are the some examples that students did in the past, all right? Uh, you want to pay attention to assignment deliverable. There are two files. So you're not going to submit one. You're going to submit two, right? If JSON file implementation is missing, unfortunately, the paper cannot be graded, right? Then remember this. If you accidentally delete Watson conversation service, that's it. You're going to lose your work unless you exported the JSON file, right? Then you can reimport the JSON file. Then there is, another, there is a famous quote, the only mistake you can make is not asking for help. So please, please reach out for assistance if needed. This is a must know terminology for assignment four. So if you're stuck, if you need help, right? When I'm helping you, I'm gonna be using terminologies, like for example, intent entity. And if you don't know what an entity is, we're gonna be talking foreign language here, right? So you know intent, right? It's it's it, it, intent means like an action. You want to do something, right? And an entity is an example. It 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 intent example. It qualifies. Like for example, suppose that you're driving a car. The intent could be what to turn something on, right? You want to turn something on. The entity is going to be radio, air conditioning, lights. You know what I'm saying? So ent entity, it like qualifies the intent. Intent is an action that you want to take, right? So, and so on. You got the dialogue skill, right? Then, the, then you have the dialogue notes. You need to understand the properties and etc. right? So what is a chatbot? Well, in general, we know that the bot is a general system. It's just a program that enable it's, it's trained to solve the specific problem. It just automatically runs based on certain rules. Unlike the bot, chatbot, it understands the natural language. It just has an intelligence. Also, it's in, it trained in a certain area. Unlike, unlike chat GVT, it trained, chatbot is trained on specific area. Like for example, uh, 
the healthcare area, right? Uh, it could be something about your blood pressure. And then when you ask about uh, something like a CPR, your child won't, won't answer it because it's not trained. Hi, Professor Razan, thanks for joining. All right. Anyway, so chatbot is a system that it understands your language. Basically, you type the question in a natural language and you get the response based on what the chatbot is trained on, right? So uh, this is a high level. This is what you're gonna do. You're going to define the purpose of your application. You're gonna define the scenarios and you're gonna build the conversation flow diagram. You're gonna use Visio and you have access to Visio because uh, your student email comes with a set of applications and Visio is one of them, all right? Then you're gonna use Watson Assistant Service on the IBM Cloud and you're gonna implement the dialogue, right? Then you're gonna be training the application through defined scenarios on the specific topic of your choice. You're gonna well deployment in this case. Deployment is you're gonna build the Watson assistant. You're gonna share the link with your friends, and I can be your tester also if you like. Then you're gonna check the conversation log, and based on that, you're making some adjustments, right? You're gonna identify the limitation in your implementation, and you're gonna suggest the enhancement. Oh, and also. What you're going to do, you're going to read about other services in the IBM Cloud and consider what can you do to integrate, right? Like, for example, it could be text to speech or speak to text that can be used to integrate into your uh, chat word, right? Like, for example, maybe I want to uh, say my question, right, instead of typing the question. And you can have a, a speech to text that translates what I say into the words, right? You could do that. All right. So what is it going to be? We have an application that user may use at any time, 24 hours, 24 seven, it's available, no cost, right? So uh, you may use the application to estimate the body mass in index based on the height in inches and weight in pounds. So limitation. It can only handle height in inches and, and weight in pound. It does not let you choose the metric to use. So this is a limitation to note here, right? Assumption maybe. So you're not gonna be spending hours to doing the web search to find out how to calculate your BMI, you just enter, right? Then also it can tell you if your blood pressure is normal, it can give you general information about body mass index and about the blood pressure. The answers are consistent. Like for example, if I enter that my blood pressure is 120 over 80, it's gonna tell me that my blood pressure is normal. If one of you enters the same vitals, you're gonna get the same answer. Maybe it will be worded slightly differently, but it's not gonna say that you have a high blood pressure, right? Just an example. But then, of course, if you want to answer new questions, the application needs training, right? And did I forget to tell you the good news? Very good news. You don't need to worry about the capacity hours for this assignment. You don't need to worry about capacity hours for this assignment. That's a good news, right? All right. So basically, <laughs> What's happening is that we have three doctors who work in the office. Mr. Monitor, who works between midnight and 10 a.m. Then we have Ms. Sessoscope, who works between five between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. And then Mr. BMI, right? So we have three doctors. When you start the application, the doctor on duty should, should greet you and enter and display a menu. So let's take a look. This is an example right here. So see this, if I launch this, do you see that? So now I can restart, do you see that I restarted it? So this is my Mr. BMI. Why do I see this picture? Because it's right, right now it's past 5 p.m., right? 
this is a doctor on duty and he says how may i help you and this is a menu that <laughs> options that i have i can say that i want to estimate my body mass index and it's asking me what is my height in inches i can type a number or i can also spell the number right if i type 60 it's supposed to recognize the number 60 right it should be smart it should recognize it now it's asking me how many pounds i weigh and i'm just gonna put my weight here right and it's gonna tell me what is it gonna tell me it tells me by my my, my body marks index right healthy now i'm gonna start new conversation usually I display the menu, but not sure why it did not come up here, but let's just restart. All right. So now, instead of asking, instead of selecting this option, I'm going to do this. I'm going to select, uh, what is BMI? Well, what is it going to do right now? It's going to explain me what BMI is, right? Uh, here, there is a little limitation. Unfortunately, this text is hard-coded, but Several semesters ago, we had access to the service called Discovery Service. So we could actually take that Discovery Service and integrate with this application. So what it was doing was uh, we could create a collection of articles on a topic, and it would show the set of related articles. And that's how this chatbot worked several semesters ago, where on the, on the specific topic, you can pull the web articles, okay? Not now, but I'm just telling you, this limitation here, this text is hard-coded, but it would have been nice if we could do integration with what's in Discovery, where you create a collection of documents, right? And it could search through those documents, all right? So now there is another option I could select like, for example, I can select my blood pressure, right? Now, suppose that uh, my blood pressure is dangerously high, right? Depending on what my blood pressure is, it's going to take certain action, right? So I just type this. 180 is a very dangerous reading, right? So now it's going to exit and it's going to tell me that I should see my doctor. That's it, right? That I need. I need to do the, I need to do the, oh, well, it's a stage two that I need to see the doctor and that I need to make some changes in a lifestyle, right? That's what it's doing now. Uh, here, it's asking me what I want to do next. Now that I want, suppose that I want to email the information, right? And I'm going to enter my email. Well, suppose that I just type this. It's going to pick up that my email format is incorrect. It's not going to attempt to send me an email, but it's looking for specific format, right? So let's say I'm going to say x at y.com. This should pass, right? That passed. Now it's going to echo this. It's going to say thank you, and the information will be emailed, right, shortly. Now what I could do, I could say that I want to exit. Watch what's going to happen now. It's tell me. Well, scissors have a nice source day. Where does the source day come from? It's reading the date. It's reading the date system entity date, right? Today is source day. It's reading what date it is, and it's extracting day of the week from the date, all right? So see, not exited. I'm going to give you the JSON file, and I recommend running it on a different day than check it on the weekend because it's going to display different message for the weekend, all right? So let's go back to slide. So here is just explanation here. And it's just the conversation. This is a scenario. See, this is what happened. User enters, user selects uh, uh, estimate BMI, right? The application is going to prompt to enter the height. And if I enter invalid value, it's going to tell me, hey, I'm expecting a number. Also, at any time, I should be able to quit the conversation, right? If, I, if I'm shy about disclosing my weight, I can type exit and I should be able to do that, right? So then also, 
Scissors, I should be here, but I can type the whole sentence. I'm 65 inches tall. It's supposed to extract the number 65 from that sentence, all right? So then it calculates the BMI and it's gonna tell you if you are in the healthy range and if you're not, right? Uh, this one is a blood pressure. It's gonna ask you to enter the blood pressure. Then it's gonna tell you if it's low or if it's high or if it's normal, right? So if it's over 180, right, for the, for the type region or over 120 for the lower region, the application should immediately terminate, right? So see, I'm gonna start this again. This is what's gonna happen in this scenario. I select this here and I'm gonna select this, uh, my blood pressure, right? So now I'm gonna enter something like 190, right? I'm gonna enter 190 and I'll just put 100. What's gonna happen right now? It's gonna tell me, hey, you have to you have to have a crisis. You must go to your, to your doctor immediately. And that's it, it's gonna go to quit, right? That's it, have a nice source day. See, so it, it depends on what the user says, different answer, all right? Let's go back to the slides, oops. So here, this is just an explain, it gives you the picture for the BMI and gives you the picture for the blood pressure ranges. Well, of course, uh, some guidelines change at all times, so it would be better to pull the set of articles instead of doing the hard coding, right? Because there are always like changes and you want to show latest and greatest, but at the moment, integration of this discovery service is not possible. So it's hard coded. Um, this is just email me the information, but I did something different for the email scenario. Uh, take a look at this. So I should be able to quit, right? But sometimes you don't want it to keep asking all day, right? So I select an option and I go email me the information, right? It's gonna ask me about my email. Look, I entered incorrectly once, it's gonna ask me again. I entered incorrectly twice, it's gonna ask me again. Now it's three times, it's gonna exit. See? Jesus, sorry I did not get why, why sorry why did email is required to send an information. See, it exited. You don't want it to be loops in a cycle forever, right? It's just an example, right? Or if I'm entering my, my information and I feel shy about entering weight, I can type exit and quit the conversation, right? So you know that. Well, I started with a high level, right? Then I'm gonna dive into the details of implementation. And this is an exit scenario, see? What happens, uh, it's extracting the date, and it's gonna, it's gonna, well, scissors, we have actually several scenarios. The first scenario is person is having the hypertensive crisis. It's gonna show that message about the crisis. Then it's gonna show the uh, thank you message, right? And then we have a different message for the weekend, see? So see here, uh, then remember this, selecting an option from the menu is equivalent to typing the same text. Right, if I select email me, it's equivalent to type email me. All right, so this is a flow diagram. I know it looks complex, but you're gonna have a diagram that looks like this, maybe not like this, but similar. So you're gonna have, you have the conversation start, right? And what happens next, what happens next, etc. So everybody has access to Visio, right? If you don't have the, version on your PC, you have online version. And even better, you can save files online on your own dive. It's much better because if the, your computer crashes, you have a backup, right? So you're gonna build this diagram, right? So now here are some in details. What you need to do is you need to create a new skill. Skill also known as a workspace. In some readings, they refer to the skill as a workspace. So here I am 
This is Watson conversation service, Watson assistant. I have one skill. I created one skill. You can have up to five skills, right? So then before you delete the skill, you can go here and you can do what? Export. You can download the JSON file. You will need to download the JSON file, right? This is download. And this is how you save the JSON file to your hard drive, okay? And the file that you need to turn in, you turn in the JSON file and a paper, right? So this is a skill, I created a new skill. What is a skill? Well, it's a it's an area where you have all your intents and entities and a dialogue defined, right? You have to create the dialogue, but for the dialogue, you've got your intents and entities, right? That's what it is here. Then you need to identify what intents and entities you have. In my case, I want to estimate the BMI. I I want to explain something, right? Uh, I want to email the information and I want to exit. Entity is probably going to be the BMI. It's a context, right? Then you, got, you have the blood pressure and you have an email. Email is a special entity. It's a pattern because you specify the pattern which must be matched. Right, and feel free to reuse this pattern. You have to have at least one pattern entity. You can have an email, and another example could be the PIN, right? Could be like a four digit something, or it could be the phone number, right? Phone number could also be an expression. If I enter XXX, I'm entering what invalid phone number, something like that, right? So, uh Entities. There are two types of entities. My entities and system entities. What is the difference? System entities are pre-built entities. They're not editable. And you use across multiple skills, but you cannot export them. You cannot import them. You cannot add them. Uh, the name starts with SYS. So this is a prefix SYS, right? When you create your own entities, those are entities that you defined. They're editable and can be trained, right? Then uh, they are local. They belong to the skills where you create them. You can import them from CSV file and you can do them manually. And the, the name cannot start with SYS because it's a reserved name for the system entities. Uh, in your chatbot in your exercise, right? You're asked to import the CSV file. Why? Because if you were instructed to add entities one by one, this walkthrough would have been more than 100 pages long. So just as a shortcut, you're given the CSV file and you're asked to import, right? This is just a review on how to add entity manually. You just go to the entity pages page and click add, right? And then just follow the steps, right? Good here. Then when you build entities and intents, you're going to start creating the dialogue. So for this, for this chatbot, I'm going to click on a skill. This is a dialogue for this specific chatbot. The dialogue, dialogue consists of nodes, right? Each dialogue must start with a welcome node and end with anything else node, non-negotiable, right? Uh, when you start the conversation, the welcome node gets triggered. It's a condition. It, it means that the conversation has started, right? Anything else, it means that, see, what happens is when it gets the user input, it's going to check each node entry condition. So. Is the user, is it the conversation start? No. Is the user, want, does the user want to email something? No. Does the user want to estimate BMI? No. If the user want, does the user wants to exit? No, and etc. If nothing gets activated here, 
it goes to anything else. And if the user is notified that the input is not recognized, right? Like in here, I have this Watson Assistant. I'm going to restart, refresh it. And it's going to do this. I'm going to type the word CPR. But the chatbot is not trained on the CPR, right? You know, the CPR, the first aid thing. I'm going to type CPR, but the chatbot is not trained. It's going to tell me it doesn't understand you. Uh, in all days when we had, when it was possible to integrate with Watson Discovery, what that would do is it would attempt to search the knowledge base of articles for CPR, and it would return the articles on CPR. That's how it worked when we could integrate with Discovery, but it's no longer possible, right? All right, so we're going to go back. So see that those are the nodes. The conversation consists of node. Node is not necessarily a scenario. It's just an implemented piece of the dialogue, I'd say, right? So go and go back. Um, each node has a condition. Condition determines which input triggers a node. Then it has a response. And examples of responses are text, option, pause, image, and also the video. You need to have the text, option, pause, image, and video in your uh, chatbot, right? And then when the response is, response is read, right? When the chatbot responds, what should we do next? Should it wait for user input or should it jump to a certain point in the conversation? All right. Then each node, the node can have child node. Like, for example, see this welcome node has a child node. Right. Uh, here, the reason it says true because I want, once, once this is done, I want it to go here straight. See? So, but do not set the entry condition to true in the parent node because that node is going to be fired, right? Before anything else is checked under it, all right? So here, this is a welcome node, for example. The condition is welcome, right? It's an entry condition. Then I have something called the conditional response. Well, what, what is it doing? What is now? If you go to the system entity, there is a system entity, see the system time. I'm using time, I'm using number, I'm using date. Only turn on what you're using, right? So here in the dialogue, this is where it's used. It's checking the time. What, what time is it now? Well, right now, if it's before 10, it's gonna check actually if it's between midnight and 10 a.m. Here, it's going to check it's between 5 p.m. and midnight. Here, remember, I told you that there is an anything else node, but, but in this case, it's different anything else. In this case, anything else means neither this nor that. All right? So if it's not between midnight and 10, and if it's not between... Uh, if it's not between midnight and 10 and not between uh, 5 and midnight, then it's going to take this one, right? This pass. What is it here? I'm going to click on this gear to open. So I have a text response. It's going to show any of this. Remember, I must have response variation. So that way, the chatbot is not going to repeat itself. It's going to say this. Greetings, I'm a Mr. Monitor, or it's going to take this, or it's going to say this, right? Next, oops, it's going to also show the picture, see? This is a link. You cannot copy and paste the link to the picture, but you can paste the image of the URL. So you find the picture, right? Usually, the Firefox browser works with this, not not Internet Explorer, but in Chrome, you can also right click on image and you can get something called the get image link. You do it, you do Google search for an image and get the link. The link should end with always JPG or PNG, right? So the link has to be valid. If I take this link 
And if I post it in a here, it should be a valid link. It should take me to the picture, right? Is this? So I had to take the I had to do I had to do right click and there should be an image. I uh, should be copy image link, something like that. Uh, it does not work very well in uh, IE, but it works very well in a uh, uh, Firefox, maybe Chrome. Okay, so you're gonna get the image URL, and you're gonna put the image URL in uh, in in here. See, okay. Well, after that, it's gonna go. What 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 does it say to do next? It's gonna jump to, and what what is gonna jump to? Well, it's going to go to the main menu, which is a sub node here, and it's going to evaluate. It's going to, it's going to, and it's going to go in here, right? Evaluate the response here, right? There is something else that it does in here. Uh, well, there are several ways to do it. In your tutorial, right, ungraded exercise, you're, you're showing how to use the JSON editor, right? In your example, you are, you're asking user to enter the name and you are showing how to read the input in a JSON editor. Another way to do that, you can also set the, uh, you can also do the context area editor. You can, you can set, Oops, I have to close the JSON editor. See this? You can also set your variables like this. See? Uh, I'm setting number in terms of zero, but this is actually for the email me. This is for the email. Well, what this does in here, it reads the day of the week into the day. Okay? Somewhere, I have to read the date. And this is just the uh, syntax. If you put five letters E, it's gonna read the full day name, full day. If you put three letters, it's gonna read the day abbreviation, right? And here it just displaying, this is options, options, response type. So what it is, uh, option response type has a label and a value. Label is what I see when I look at the options. Well, see this is in uh, here, right? So uh, if I reload this, I'm gonna see the, this menu, right? Well, well, look here, options, well, label, label is what I actually see. I see this? Those are the labels. And value is an intent that gets fired when I select this option, all right? This is a little bit similar to in HTML when you display the dropdown, right? Each option has a value and a display value. Here it's a label, all right? Label is what the user sees and the value is an intent that gets triggered when that option is selected. This is equivalent to typing explain BMI. So if I go in here, and if I type explain BMI, right, it's the same thing as selecting the option, see? See, here it's asking my, for my height in inches. And I should be able to exit at any time, right? See? Sounds like you want to quit. See this? I exited. But what I'm saying is that you have these options. And in these options, you can uh, choose. See, this, this, this is a label. And the value is what, what is being called, right? Let's go back to slides. I went a little bit not in order, but that's OK. Oh, well, yes, it's in order. I showed you this, right? I show you now get the current time, right? So here we go. You've got. Here, it's like killing two birds in the same stone. Look, what do I have in here? I'm using system entities. I have a conditional responses. I'm using images here. I've showed you how to do response variation, see? Variety of things in one node. Right? 
So here, this is just the explain the blood pressure node configuration. What it's doing, it's in uh, here, scroll, I have to scroll down. Here, it's a blood pressure, blood pressure reading. Okay, what, what it's doing, first of all, the node entry condition, uh, it has to, it has to be like, for instance, what I'm saying is this, I want to, um, uh, it, when it recognizes the blood pressure, right? And not explain. When, when, when it recognizes the blood pressure in the user input, what it does is it's gonna ask, it's reading for a number, see this? System number. I'm reading the system entity. I'm reading the num. Uh, I'm reading it in the number. It's a system entity, right? And this is a, the, the. I'm saving it as a systolic. And here, I'm asking until it recognizes. So here, what am I doing? I'm. I'm doing. I'm using the slot. This is a slot, right? It's required. I must enter this systolic region to continue, right? And this is just the configuration. Like what happens if I enter in wallet? I want to I want to be asked again, right? Uh here, well, sometimes as I mentioned earlier, I want to be able to quit, right? So what you do is you define a handler. Handler allows to uh, jump around the topics a little bit without losing track. So if I type explain, it's just gonna tell me what the blood pressure is, right? And then I'm back to conversation. If I type goodbye, I want to quit. I should be able to quit, right? Or maybe I don't know what my lower region is and I want to quit. It should be possible, right? Based on that, it's doing, it's checking here uh, what the regions are and it's gonna do the different uh, responses. And again, anything else here means that none of the above. It's not anything else node, it's none of the above. And here it just, if you click on gear, it's just a configuration, okay? So that's what this does. And well, what are you doing here from technical point? You've got your conditional responses here. You've got your, uh, Number entity, right? You're using your number entity in here, etc. So um see you have two response types that I showed you. You have text image and you can also do the video, right? You need to do the video for your in your assignment, you're asked to put a video. Just go, just go to YouTube and find a video related to your topic and put the link. Right. Uh, we talked about the response type option, right? What label is and what the values are. Uh, that one is the blood pressure. It, it's a. All right. This is just talking about the slots, right? Slots enables gathering and information from the user. Like a blood pressure, it's it gathering the numbers. Uh, it's looking for a number in the input. You have two slots here, right? And to enable slots, you need to go to when you add the node, add the node here, there is, there is an option you need to customize it. Like when you click here, here, this is customized. You have to specify here if you want to do the slots, or if you and if you want to do the multiple conditional responses, right? You do that here. Uh, then you have this uh, here estimate the BMI. This is just the, the syntax where you're doing the calculation here. This is a calculation. It's gonna check, right? And it's gonna output what your BMI is. See this? This is just the, the, the syntax. Just the syntax to output. He put the opening thing, then here the question mark. This is just the syntax. 
Okay. Uh, then I mentioned that you have in the entities, my my entities, you have the special entity, which is a valid email. And here you have a pattern, right? Uh, you may have more than one pattern, keep that in mind. Like for example, if you have a phone number, you can have a different phone, different pattern for international and then for the local, right? You can have two patterns. Then for the this one topic, right? Topic entity, it has two values, blood pressure topic and BMI topic. And each value has multiple uh, synonyms, right? So those are another way to say BMI, body fat measure, body fat percentage, etc. Because people can say the same concept differently, and it should be able to recognize what I'm asking for, right? So those are the synonyms, and more synonyms get added as you're training the chatbot. All right, so let's go back here. So this is how to, to extract the email. It's a little bit tricky. And sometimes if you don't get it right away, keep in mind it took me a little bit of time to get that also. So here, this is email me, right? Well, here you want to check for email which is email what? It's an entity, right? And here you're going to please enter your email and you want to save it as an email, right? Then uh, this is just the dummy value. You're checking if three attempts have already been used and if yes, then uh, you set it to X. And then if it's an X, then see this is a, you, you're just saying, Oh, wait, if it's not X, if it's not X, right? If it's not, if if user didn't provide an email, it's set into the dummy value X. And if it's not X, then it's just going to tell you, it's going to echo the email, and it's going to say where the information was sent, see? So see here, this is a context, right? And it's, it's see, this is checking for the email. This is how you do it. This is how you check because uh, email dot literal because you are uh, entering the valid email. You it, this is a pattern entity. You are reading the pattern, right? And it is checking for the attempt, and it's gonna increment an attempt by one. Discard the changes. I don't want to save changes. So here it just. Um, well, anything else, in this case, refers if it's an X, right? If it's set to the dummy value. I did not put handlers here. I should have. I always must have handlers to be able to exit, right? But I do exit this conversation if the user enters invalid email three times, right? So it's in here. Uh, if attempt, see this, if, if, if I already used, well, in the beginning, attempt was zero, right? Next time I try, attempt is one. And then next time, when I enter it the third time, attempt is going to be set to two. If attempt was two, then I set the email to X, right? This is what I do here. Then... Here, if it's not, right, if I have not exhausted the number of attempts, I just add a one to attempt, right? And I give a chance to answer it again. This is a little bit tricky, yeah. All right, makes sense, hope it does. So that's an email, it's that. I showed you how to use the time, right? I just took this, there is a guide uh, but where you can uh, you can borrow the expression. This is not cheating. This is a code reuse. It's fine to borrow something like this, this expression. It's fine to borrow the pattern for the email, 
But what's not a fine is taking this JSON file and submitting it for the grade. This is not good. Do not submit Mr. BMI. Do not submit Mr. Cole. Do not submit any examples that you find, right? It has to be your application, your work, all right? So this is just a goodbye note. And in that one, it just check in for the day. Remember, we are extracting the date, the day, right? We check in what day of the week it is, right? Oh, the folder. The folder allows to expand and collapse the set of nodes. Well, for example, information on a topic, I can expand this and there are two nodes, explain what BMI is, explain what blood pressure. Well, this is just basically if I said kind of like I have a set of uh, uh, maybe re related nodes or something like that, that I want to be able to expand and collapse, then, then I use folder, All right? You don't have to, but just saying. And see here, it's just an implementation where it's, the chatbot should not be repeating itself. It's the same thing, but different words. And this is just showing a picture, right? Another thing that I need to tell you is uh, when you are testing, look at this, you try it. Well, then you click on manage context. Do you see this? So now number of attempts is zero, it's reading the date, etc. Now what I'm going to do, I'm selecting an option, right? And suppose that I want to do, I want to estimate the BMI. All right, so it recognized here that I, I'm calling the BMI entity. It recognized that. It recognized the topic intent, BMI, right? So here it's asking, what is my height in inches? So when, when I enter, but take a look at this again, manage context, see this, do you see anything like height? No, you don't, right? There is no, nothing like height here. So now I'm gonna go, go back here and I'm gonna put my height, right? I'll just put height, right? And I'm gonna click enter. Look what's gonna happen right now. What is this? It's system number. It read a number. It shows it read a number. If I go here now, I should expect to see the height and I should expect to see the value that I just entered. This is how you troubleshoot, very important. You want to look here and you want to check that this actually gets set, right? If you're not getting expected results, you want to look at this context. What is it set to? So now, here, it's asking me to enter my weight. I'm gonna hit enter. See, it's giving me the body mass index. Well, suppose that it gave me something wrong, like error. I want to go here, and I want to check if I'm actually storing what was entered correctly. See, I expect to see weight in here. What I did not do in here, it's a limitation. When the conversation is over, I should be actually resetting all of these entries, right? I should not rely on a chatbot to do that for me. I should be doing it, right? You see that? You have to check this. It will help you a lot. It will save you days and nights. Then when you make a change, when you make a change here, you need to click on clear to retest, all right? Now, so this is a folder. What else? Well, this is just a test. It's just showing you how things are being read from the keyboard. See this? Here, it's reading that you want BMI. Here, it's reading the number. Well, it's going to show in relevant for intent. That's fine. Because you, it, it, it's reading that you enter the system number. Okay? This is another, this is just an email, okay? What, what next you need to do is you need to build a virtual assistant. So you're gonna go, I already built one, but I can show you, this is my assistant already, but I can show you again 
you need to click on create assistant. Then you're gonna type the name, right? Like I can say something like Elena Tenskaya Kolskaya, right? Can I do this? I can do this, right? Then I'm gonna do create an assistant. After I do this, what do I need to do? I need to add, add the dialogue skill. Add the dialogue skill. And this is a dialogue skill that I'm gonna add, right? Here is my skill. This is what you would do, right? I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because I already created an assistant. I don't need to. It's gonna be confusing. Oops, assistant. And I'm just gonna delete this one. I'm gonna go delete and it's gonna ask me to type delete. Okay, done. Now, well, here, this is what you need to do. This part is important. I click here. Do you see this preview? You're gonna click here. This is a link that you need to share with your friends, okay? Right here. We take this link, copy and paste, and send it to your friends in the email, all right? This is what you do. After they test, after they run your chatbot, after they run the conversations, this is what's going to happen. If you go back to your skill, the skill is collecting data. This is, this is an overview page here. Well, see this? This is an overview. In your case, you will have two days, right? So you're going to enter. You have, you have this, right? You need to take screenshot of this. number Total number of conversation, number of messages per conversations. Now, this is the maximum number of conversations per day. And see the weak understandings. Here is just showing you the trend, right? Well, in the, that one here, this is also important because it shows you how your chatbot is being used, which intents and which entities are called the most. Because when you develop your chatbot further, you need to know which area to focus on. Like if more people are using this for BMIs and for blood pressure, perhaps something that you add, you may want to be expanding the BMI part, right? Well, it just, it just an example, all right? Then when you click on the intent, you can see all conversations where where that intent was triggered. Okay, you can see that. Let me go back to the overview and see it showing weak understanding. And I can actually see the logs for weak understandings. Like for example, well, CPR is irrelevant, right? But if I saw that it interpreted it uh, is irrelevant in error, then I can go here and I can make a correction. See that? This is what I mean by correction. If your user typed something that got read as irrelevant, but it says relevant, you're gonna go back to your conversation and you're gonna select an intent that should have been recognized, all right? It was not recognized, but it should have been recognized. You select it, then the input will be added to the examples, right? And it will be trained. So when a user runs the next day, you know, when a when user runs the chatbot next day, it will, uh, recognize that input. Well, another example could be the language, right? Uh, sometimes I do that when I test the student chatbot, they have a bunch of languages and I try to enter a language that you don't have, right? That you don't have in your values. I try to break it, that's me, right? So then you're gonna see in the log that I'm a user, I entered the language that your chatbot did not recognize. You're gonna go to the conversation 
right? You're going to find that conversation and you're going to edit the classification of that language to the language entity, right? So see this, well, see this like this one. Uh, I open the conversation where here, exit, right? It read the exit correctly, right? But if it did not, if it, if, if it read exit incorrectly, I can fix the correct intent here and it will save it. The next time the same tester runs the chatbot for the same input, the chatbot would be trained, right? So let's go back. This is the assistant, right? That's a dialogue skill that you're gonna add. Okay, well, that's a preview link. You need to send, send that link to your friends or whoever is testing. You must have your chatbot ready two to three days before the assignment is due because you have to run the experiment for two days, right? And after they run experiment on day one, you need to look at the logs, right? Then you, you need to uh, explain anything that you changed. If nothing, then you say that. But usually there is something. So then you can ex ex repeat on the second day, talk about the logs, and then pretend, suppose that you were running it on the day three, what changes you would have made, right? You need to share the observations in your paper. But here, you know, what I observe might be different from what you observe, right? So, you know, uh, well, this is a log, right? It's just how it looks like. You, you need to, you may want to pick at least one conversation and explain in, the, in detail what exactly was read from user input, right, et cetera. Well, this is just shows an example of user conversation, right? And then for you, I put some links. You can look at this here. It's on how to work with dates and time, how to read the expression. Here is how to gather information with slots, right? There is a lot of uh, links in a classroom. This is not this is not to overwhelm everybody with readings. Those are the just to give you some examples on how to do things. So when you implement your chatbot, make sure that you include what is expected, right? You want to use dates or numbers or occurrences, something like that, system entity. You want to make sure that you are gathering and storing input from your users, you're using slots. And then each slot has to have a handler I should have a way to tweet the conversation or to basically briefly jump to another topic and then return to where I was, right? I should be able to do that, right? And as I mentioned earlier, some topics that student did were like um, perhaps a student advisor. For example, the chatbot could ask are you, do you want a graduate or undergraduate? If you want a graduate, it could uh, give you the, cho the choice of different programs that we have. Well, of course, it would be nice to be able to read the descriptions from the UMGC catalog, right? Well, but that, you know. And like, for example, perhaps you could, you, you could ask you, uh, so if you want to undergraduate, it could ask you, if you want to graduate, it would ask you if you have another graduate degree or if you are a transfer student, et cetera. So basically there could be some set of questions that you may get answer for before reaching out your advisor. Well, something like that, that's one example. And not, another example would be, restaurant reservation restaurant reservation where the chatbot is going to ask uh what time you want what day of the week how many people well etc you can reserve that or it could be something like a pizza order you could ask for the size you could ask for the toppings that the user wants to select 
And based on that, you dis you display the price. But for example, you're asked about the topping toppings. One example of the handler would be: I want to ask what available toppings do you have, right? Maybe I don't know what toppings you have, right? Uh, so you want to make sure. So you you could uh, like you, you could perhaps say, we have this and this and this toppings. We have, for example, mushrooms. We have extra cheese, we have a uh, bacon, right? And let the user enter what toppings they want. Uh, what else you could ask? Uh, the size, right? The toppings, then uh, what type of crust you want? You know, those things. Then the user could ask you, could ask for something like about the dietary information, right? Well, I'm just giving an example. So that, that's an example. Restaurant reservation, advising, the pizza. See, I gave you three examples right on the fly. It, it has to, it can be something of your interest. Anything that, think about your hobby, think about something that you like to do, right? Or it could also be the ice cream sale. So if you want it in a cup or if you want it in a cone, uh, how many scoops do you want? What flavor do you want? What toppings you like? Well, etc. Right? And you could be asking about the calories information. Well, uh, just an example. It does not have to be medical. It could be in a food area, like marketing area, or it could be also in a, a car services. I believe it was a car, say, car dealership. Somebody did on a car dealership. So what type of car do you want? Uh, if you want a luxury car or not luxury, how many doors do you want in your car? If you want a used car or new car, well, things like that. You store the information and based on the user's answers, you give the suggestion, right? Well, I gave you several examples from past semesters, but you choose what exactly you want to do, it's your choice, right? So, questions. Guys, please, questions. And uh, depending on where you live, uh, some good news, because we're gonna be changing clocks on November 5th, so you got extra hour to work on your assignment. Right, you get an extra hour because we change clock back. So, you know, another good news. The other one was that you don't need to worry about the capacity hours for this assignment. Well, there is a limitation on number of API calls, but wait a minute, no students in the past reach one tenth of that limit, so we don't worry. Yes, there is a limit on number of API calls you can do per month, but don't worry because nobody reached one tenth of that limit in the past. So, no limitation. Enjoy. Hmm? Anything, any questions? Do you know the topic you're going to be doing? You need to kind of like have something in mind now. You won't be able to do anything big like this chatbot, but just do something. Basically, you are asking the user for an input. You process in that input, right? Something like that. You want to add some images, you want to add a video, different response types, right? Uh, while people are thinking about questions, Professor Ozan, is there anything that you would like to add? I'm good, Yelena. Thank you so much. So I just have oh, to okay. know, uh, make sure that they complete their uh, assignments on time and they give some uh, time for the results. So they need to complete before the due dates. Right, exactly. exactly. We, don't any, we don't have any extension for this assignment because uh, the everything, all the grades needs to be submitted within three days. Right, exactly. Yes, this is a deadline because because of the it has to do with um, uh, advising. There is a lot of stuff going on. There is advising, financial aid. So those departments depend on your grades being on time. So that, that's the thing. 
she like uh well it, it's a lot going on behind the scene and some of the stuff I might not be aware of but it has to be on time and also because they're running the, the script academic integrity script that they run to check if somebody was on a probation if they need to be taken off or if somebody goes on probation or you know the things like that so that 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 see it's academic integrity academic academic standing script it's it's a lot going on so uh that's why it has to be on time how many different dialogues you have one dialogue it's one dialogue right but how many notes it depends on oh how many different scenarios sorry you mean scenarios i think right i thought you mean scenarios five scenarios at least Five scenarios. But you saw the scenarios, right? Email the information is one. Yes, exactly. At least five. You don't want to do too much because, you know, when you try to do all at once, it's hard. Uh, in the beginning, this application was just to show how to read two numbers from the input and how to do something with the two numbers. Right? So, uh, yeah, at least five scenarios, all right? I hope it makes sense. Questions and things, it, well, yeah, go ahead, please type your questions. I'll answer it if I know the answer to it. And what you're gonna get is you're gonna get link to recording, you're gonna get the slides, and you're gonna get the JSON file that you could import, right? So uh, to import, you're gonna do this. You're gonna go to the skills, all right? See, go to skills, go to create skill. You go to dialogue, next. Then this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna do upload skill. And here you're going to select the files that you saved, right? And you upload the skill. All right? So remember, very important, JSON file you must submit because your work cannot be marked without this, without, without this implementation, right? Do not submit Mr. Code. Every semester, somebody has to do it. Somebody has to not follow instructions. I hope it's not gonna be you, all right? Can we have this semester when nobody, when nobody in the class submits <laughs> Mr. BMI or Mr. Collins? Can we have a semester, this semester, where, where everybody submits their own application? I hope so, right? Otherwise, what's gonna happen is uh, prof the, then uh, we will need and another entry in the grade book called Yelena and Yelena's grade, right? I have to be graded. If 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 the submission is the example that I gave you, then I'm the one who gets the grade for the assignment, right? Uh, I'm like, wait a minute, I already have my master's degree. I'm not working on second master's degree. Well, uh, all right. Any questions, guys? Please don't feel shy. Don't be afraid. I like questions. Going once. Going twice. Anybody? Well, if there are no questions, then we're going to call it a night. And I hope you guys enjoy this assignment. Right. I'm gonna stop the recording and oh wait, let I see something in the chat. Oh, most welcome. I'm glad. I hope it helped. I hope it helped a lot. So all Thank right. You. Thank you so uh, much. Oh, most welcome. Most welcome. All right. So I'm gonna stop recording. Bye, everyone. All right.